Welcome to another episode of ZZ Weekly. Steve, uh, great to be here. As I can't always, wait for today. We got Adam Finkelstein a little bit later on the show. He's in uh, the house, I hear. A lot of chatter this week at the sites I heard about. Uh, yeah, I'm hearing that's Gibby's gut. Look at him. I, I mean, I love this audience out there, and uh, it's really been fun, and I can't wait to many more episodes. Record so far? Seven and one, folks. Another great week on the Solid. gut. Solid. Patriots, wow, we gave it to the Cowboys up in Jerry World. A little bit closer on the Florida State. Didn't quite get it done. We It's a win. Yep. But 31-26, I mean, seven will keep rolling. Right. Um, on to next week, I know. A lot of rumbling. So, the Flake rematch coming up. What's Did I hear on? anything about this game? Are we playing the Colt? Is that really who's coming to town? Well, the question is, is Luck going to suit up? He's going to suit up, but he's not going to go anywhere near the end zone. I'm telling you, what could be the lock of the season. Pats all over the Colts. They are going to look putrid. You thought the AFC Championship with, with the deflated balls was bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait till you see Indy. Sorry, Mr. Adidas and all that. We love you in Indianapolis. But it's going to be a Pat's rock show. 31-6, Brady and company. No touchdowns for Luck. Andrew Luck might not get into the red zone. Wow. Big statement. Big statement, but that's my lock of the year. That's that's what happens with Gibby's gut, though. Well, we're 7-1 so far. No question. And down to college. I, I love the college game. And you know what? As much as I like anybody, Alex Garfinkel is the best for our teams. He cares about each and every one of them, and he bleeds blue. Mr. Penn State going into the horseshoe at Ohio State this Allie, weekend. Allie Garfinkel, the bracketologist. Mr. Bracketologist, Mr. A of, ZG. A lot of people saying Joe Lenardi who this weekend. Lenardi who? That's that's the guy. <laughs> he is, but not this week. Take out your Penn State. Might as well put, put it in a dumpster fire. It is going to be ugly in Columbus. Oof. I am you telling you, Ohio State... 47-7. to 7. It is going to be shameful what's going to happen on Saturday Night Football ABC. Big spreads for you on these picks. You know what? Big spreads. I can't wait to get home from the Northeast Hoop Festival on Sunday night and tune right to NBC to watch the Pats destroy the Colts. So we got the Pats. We have the Ohio, Ohio State. State Buckeyes and a huge weekend of NERR basketball. Lock it in. Lock it in right now. Lock it in. Parents, it's your time in ZG Weekly. Kevin, I know you got another great segment on uh, Parents Corner today. Steve, we got a lot of questions, um, you know, mainly about how can we resolve problems on site. So some of the some of the uh, methods that we've taken to uh, combat that. Yep. First thing on a Friday, you go to the Facebook web page, and what we do is we put a picture of the site director on Facebook. Each site director. Each site director right. picture on Facebook. This way, going into the tournament at your respective site, mm -hmm. you know who to go to when there is a problem. And we take a lot of pride. We know things are going to come up, you know, whether it's calls, uh, you know, scoreboards, whatever the case may be. Uh, we want everyone to know that we're all about solutions. You know, things are going to come up. We would do everything we can in advance to make sure it runs as perfectly and smoothly as possible. When things come up, we want to make sure we have personnel on site to take care of each and every issue. Right. And, and we want, you know, parents, team supporters, coaches, obviously, to know that they can approach the site director with a problem yep. and that we'll do everything in our power to solve it. Uh, and then the other new feature that we've added this year, uh, this is after the fact. So after a tournament weekend, you know, something yep. came up, I wasn't able to get to a site director, what do I do? Suggestion box. So we've, on our website, zerogravitybasketball.com, you go to our contact info and you'll find the ZG suggestion box. And what this allows you to do, Steve, is to post a comment. Okay, great. To yeah. us, you know, uh, you don't have to put your name, you can if you want, you post a comment. And right. again, our, our goal, our mission is to address each issue that comes up the best we can. And uh, we take a lot of pride in doing that. You know, the session box I read, actually read this morning, number one thing, can I get Kevin Tyrone's phone number? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So for all our uh, team supporters out there, be sure, you know, give us a comment on uh, on the suggestion box. And yeah. like I said, on site, we're going to do everything we can to solve always it. Always look for the site director and the zero gravity d gear. They're always going to be very present at each site. Typically a gray or a white uh, collared shirt. Yep. And, uh, and striped and, pants. And striped pants. That's right. We're going to get into our recap and preview segment. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Beast of the East? Whew, we're here a few days later. I'm still recovering from the Beast. I mean, what a tournament Hoopers and Zero Gravity put together. No I mean, the action and the intensity in the gyms this weekend were really off the charts. 
Yeah. Uh, congratulations with the champion scrolling across the bottom of your screen. My favorite game, probably that 10th grade players championship game was amazing. Right. Not taking anything away from that ex expressions, uh, ninth grade, 67, 66 win. Sure. But just the games, uh, that eighth grade platinum bracket was really just beat at the Mplex on, on Saturday. Those right. games were just, just too good to be true. Heard the Mplex on Saturday was buzzing. Hopping. Right. Uh, the Storm Boston Bob came, uh, overtime game in particular. You had the Storm had a buzzer beating three to take it to OT. The mm -hmm. intensity in that gym was as good as ZG Finals. It was just awesome. We had a game at UMass Boston, Steve, 100 Pistons and Rise, Rise above, above Carter. Right. Uh, where we had a, a young guy knock in a buzzer beater off the glass to send it in overtime. Uh, 100 Pistons got the win, but you talk about a moment where people were going Isn't crazy. it amazing to have all the courts kind of come together and the question. buzz in the, at, in the atmosphere with three seconds, four seconds to go? Yeah. It's like all eyes in the world are on those games. And I, I wish I was a 12-year-old kid playing in these no, games. Kids were so excited. Obviously, team supporters are into it. Uh, so it was a great weekend, and uh, that it gets even bigger. Segues into next week, which uh, you know, for our viewers out there, we have two tournaments yep. going on this weekend: one in New Hampshire, and then the NER Hoops Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, so why don't you tell us about that? Well, starting out in New Hampshire, Rumble at the Rim. It's always one of our favorite venues. Great location. I think you're going to see a good mix of teams. You might not have that top top of the cream. The top 10%, they're all going to be at the NER, but still a very good competition in a fun environment. People always love going to Hampton Beach. Mm -hmm. So myself, I'll be at that, and I think you will be as, be as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, though. Really where the talent, the action, the excitement is going to be is uh, in Greater Boston, the NERR, New England Hoot Festival. Sure. I mean, you could have a potential Final Four that might be even better than the uh, ZG Finals. You have BABC Expressions, uh, the Middlesex Magic. You know, yep. certainly not going to forget about the rivals that are probably New England's favorite club right now. Sure, all competing to be in that mix. Right, and then really everyone else is, is coming. It's going to be anyone who's who's who. If you look at the top ten recruiting rankings across NER, everyone's going to be at the tournament this weekend. And it seems like Steve, as we've continued on the path to the belt, this is my first path to the belt. But the intensity each, each week, each week has risen. It went from tournament to champions. Good. BC's like uh, awesome. And now, like, the Northeast, I mean, Adam's done such a great job getting the best talent out there. Yep. And I, I can't wait Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock at the U. That place is going to be buzzing right. for those semifinal games. So that that's, you know, only two days away. And uh, and this is great because in our next segment, we'll be able to talk to Adam. Speaking of Adam, I'm sure he's going to be able to break it down for us. No and question. Mr. Political, not going to make predictions, no one, Adam. <laughs> But it's still going to be great to have him on site. We're going to give him a 5-5, five and five, though. Let's see. We'll see what he does. Well, we're really excited about Interview of the Week this week at CG Weekly. We have a great one for you today. we got the well-respected, maybe the most influential person in New England basketball, Adam Ficklesley, Director <laughs> of New England Crew Report and National College Basketball Analyst for ESPN. So welcome aboard, Adam. We're happy to have you. Thanks for having me. Great, great to have Adam here. Steve, why don't we get right into uh, some of the questions we have. Absolutely. So we just wrapped up the Elite 75 a few weeks ago. Over 320 of the best freshmen and sophomores in all over New England and really the Northeast. Tell us a little bit about that event and kind of how it all came together. You know, we've been doing Elite 75s for almost 10 years now. It, it, really? The first one came up, uh, I was just getting out of college coaching, just leaving the University of Hartford, okay. and I took kind of my first recruiting position was with Hoop Scoop Online. Wow. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Jeff Goodman, who's, yep. who's a Boston guy, uh, he was with Scout.com. Of course, now he's one of ESPN's biggest college basketball guys, but he was a national recruiting analyst at the time with Scout.com, and we collaborated. He was helping me transition to this side of the business. We collaborated right. to do this one event. And at the time, Rakim Sanders was the best player in, sure. in Boston uh, College. Yeah, yeah, he was the best yeah. player in New England. Alex Oriaki, Jamal Coombs, Eric Murphy, wow. those guys were rising sophomores. And we had everybody in the gym. And it was it was literally only 75 kids. Back at Boston University? Uh, no, you know what? That was at Mass Premier. Okay. And wow. the, the coaching staff included Paul Biancardi, who's now <laughs> the head of our uh, ESPN recruiting at, at uh, with the uh, recruiting nation, we had Raphael Chilius, who's on the road at Washington. We sure. had Bill Barton, who's on the road at, at uh, wow. Pittsburgh, and so from there it's grown. Obviously, the demand for that was was right. pretty high, and so we obviously couldn't accommodate just seventy five kids. So then that grew into the Frost Shoff, and then the Junior Elite seventy five, and then we started the Academic Elite seventy five last year. So right. really, the goal is to give each kid in the region kind of one chance a year to to stand out and really make sure they can play in front of 
all the scouts and that that NERR team. You, you know, my favorite event is the summer at Brandeis, the senior elite 75. That's where kids really get on the right. radar for great college scholarships. I mean, D2 offers last year up the wazoo, so that was really fun. Well, that's been fun to see the kids yeah. from last year at Brandeis who, who've gone on to, to get offers and get recruited. Um, you know, like the uh, there's there's different ones I know. For example, Williston, Northampton, Jake Ross, he just visited Pace. He got offered by, uh, I want to say Merrimack, but I know he's got a couple of Division II offers now okay. and, and certainly well-earned, so that, that's been <laughs> fun to see those guys do well. The thing that I, I stood out right away was for this year when I was uh, the alumni, yeah, you, know, I mean, you mentioned some guys <clears throat> right. earlier on, but t you know, t talk some more about some of the kids that have been through uh, Elite 75. It's unbelievable. Well, what I would say is that you know it's been a, a really a great time in New England basketball the last 10 years, and everybody, every New England product who's been – drafted in the lottery of right. the NBA, has played in the Elite 75 at one time or another. So Andre Drummond, sure. Noah Vonley, Michael Carter-Williams, Nerlens Noel, <laughs> at one it's point or another, they were, they were all there. It's pretty cool because this year we actually used some of those names to, to characterize Make the our, teams. our teams. Yeah, yeah. So when you can actually <laughs> have alumni now, right. you know, back in the event, yep. I mean, it's, it's a great thing. Well, turn, turning gears, Adam, I think everyone's seen it by now. Over a thousand hits the first day. Tell us a little bit about your podcast with Cox Sports Dead, and I, I can't tell you how many people I just talked to on the phone mentioned in passing. Yeah, so so Cox Hub in, uh, started partnering with the New England Recruiting Report. This is yeah. about five years ago now, and Kevin knows, obviously, from being on the staff at Rhode Island, sure. I personally do a lot of stuff in that market with PC yep. and URI, mm -hmm. um, but they really... That collaboration between NER and Cox has really mm -hmm. helped to, to kind of bring even more coverage to New England grassroots okay. basketball, and that's always been our goal. Mm -hmm. And I think the podcast is just one more medium to do that. You know, when we first started New England Recruiting Report, there was no, there was mm -hmm. no website, there was really no coverage <laughs> right. of right. New England at all. In fact, the term New England basketball wasn't one that was used unless it was in, uh, you know, kind of an AAU um, regional type of type of term. So it's been right. neat to see the growth of that. And now there are obviously all various outlets that, that right. do it d beyond ours. But I think that with Cox, we've had NERR TV. Now mm -hmm. we have the, the Upside podcast. It's been great having the finals the last few years. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. They've been, they've covered the finals, Northeast Hoops Festival, uh, Super 16, Super 16 and, and the Elite 75. So it's great to just kind of keep pushing the envelope yep. and seeing different ways we can continue to kind of promote the region. And my, you know, in the transition that I've made, the thing that jumps out is the need for a voice and voices in the grassroots community using these platforms. So going to Cox Hub, listening to this podcast, you get so much great information about what's going on weekend and week out, you know? So I, I think that the value of it is, uh, it's just exponential. You know, as I just mentioned talking to parents, I get this probably once a week, Adam. Hey, how do I get on NERR? I want to be on that site. What's a player, I'm sure that's probably, you get that question right. more than yeah. anybody. What's someone have to do to get on there? Well, to be included on the prospect page, our, our rule is this. We, first of all, you have to be evaluated by someone on the staff, whether okay. that's me or, or one of the other scouts. And then um, what we have to do is consider you to be a definite college player. Okay. And that can mean high major Division One. That yeah. can even mean Division Three. Now, obviously, if you're a Division Three prospect, maybe it's, it's not as cut and dry. We might have to yep. wait till you right. get a little older. Okay. But once we can determine that you're, you've got the ability to play at that level, we'll add you to the prospect database. And that's... Really important to us because we wanted to promote not just the Alex Oriakis, Eric Murphys, Andre Drummonds sure. of the world, but also those kids who are hardworking kids who are going to play at, at right. the Division three level. That was my first college coaching job was at Western uh, Western Connecticut State University, which right. was Division three. And people right. don't realize how good you have to be <laughs> just, to just to play at that level. Sure. So it's uh, so that's why we we try and promote all three levels of, of potential That is prospects. one of the truest things that you could say. I don't think fit people fully realize how hard it is to make a college Division three roster. Yeah. I hear all the time, oh, I'm not good enough to go play at UConn, but maybe I'll just play at Wesleyan. That is legitimate big-time basketball. Oh, no <laughs> doubt about it. Plus, those are the reigning NESCAC champions now. So that's, but I, I think, you know, I, I just speak from my own experience. I know when we were at WestCon, we used to say, listen, everybody on our team scored 1,000 points in high school. Everybody right. on our mm -hmm. team was the best player on their high school team. And, uh, you know, before they got here. So it really was. I mean, we were recruiting just like Division ones and Division twos are. And I think especially in New England, mm -hmm. where there's one so many Division three schools, right. and then there's such quality at that level, too. Absolutely. I mean, I tell people all the time, you go watch, a, you mentioned Westland, go watch a good NESCAC game. That's, that's a scholarship caliber no doubt. game. Right. 
Now, just for the viewing audience, Adam, how, uh, the upside, how do we get there? Uh, how do we take advantage of it? Well, it, it lives on iTunes now, I'm told. Uh, what mm -hmm. it does, but, but Cox posts the link on coxhub.com. Right. And then we will post a, a kind of a link to CoxHub once it comes out. Sure. So we try and make it as accommodating as possible yeah. so you can get to it in any number of ways. You can go right to it on iTunes. Right. You can also get it on CoxHub. You can also get it on the New England Recruiting Report. And the great thing from my experience at Rhode Island, Steve, and, and being around CoxHub is the quality of the production. Okay. I mean, it, it's, it's high level. It's, uh, it's great listening. Uh, so I just highly recommend going and checking it out. And, you know, there's other ones, too. Chris DeSano does one that's does very focused one. on the A-10. Sure. And, uh, and so it's, they're, doing, they're doing great stuff. But the great thing about Cox is they're just committed to, to the region and promoting the region. Absolutely. So it's been fun to be and able then, to work with them. There's so much great stuff going on in this region from yeah. the grassroots level up through the college level right. with PC and URI. It's just a great time for New England basketball. UConn's not bad. UConn's really good <laughs> as well. <laughs> Uh, you know, we're getting ready for a huge weekend. Obviously, yeah. the New England Hoop Festival presented by NER. I can't get over the team. Looks like they keep coming in. They keep coming in. It's going to be the final four could be one for the ages and really unprecedented in New England coming this weekend. You know, can you tell us about how that started and uh, really your involvement? Well, you know, I think like the Elite 75, this is yeah. something that, that was, you know, born in the past and really evolved. And I think that, that it speaks a lot to what you guys have done right. really at Zero Gravity in terms right. of the growth of of grassroots basketball in the fall. I tell people there's no other region in the country, and this is the truth. Everybody thinks that this, you know, kind of grassroots culture in the fall is, mm -hmm. is the norm, and it, it's mm -hmm. really not. Right. I mean, right. this is this is how we do it here in large right. part because of what you guys have built. But if you want to go see an AAU game in New York, you you, you got to wait till April. Um, well, we've got so many New York teams come down here to the new NER fall circuit. It's right. been great. Yeah, exactly. So a few years ago when we first started tossing around this idea. Right. We said, okay, let, let's do one one mm -hmm. event and we'll try and draw all the top teams. And then, you know, it became clear that, that those top teams wanted to play really there with you guys yeah. every weekend. So we've been excited not just to, to kind of bring everybody this weekend, but to be there, have our, our scouts and our writers at, right. at the ZG events throughout the entire circuit. So for me, it's, it's, it's you know, there's really two ways to look at it. One, it's going to be a great weekend. If you can, you know, if, if you can only go to one, I'm a little, a little <laughs> but if you can only go to one, I think this is a great one. But really, I think it speaks to what you guys have done in, in building building the circuit, and it's really become a true fall circuit, which is totally unique. I think Kevin's a little partial to the belt. That's okay. You're, you're a belt guy? I like the belt. I want a belt. Isn't that, don't you guys have that on a t-shirt? Sure, yeah. Can, can we get out of a shirt, can please? Can I get a shirt? Come on. Someone on the production team. We got We got to get somebody. Uh, yeah, All right, right, we'll right, get right. that done. Right. What else you got, Kevin? Um, so we obviously a couple of general questions there, but now we're going to get into one of our favorite segments here on Interview of the Week. You got uh, you got a difficult act to follow. Mike Product and Middlesex <laughs> Magic was unbelievable. He went. I saw that though. He used more. You have like a, a no, word limit, right? I know. You, yeah, I, know I mean, you're only you're five getting. words, and Mike. I mean, I love you, but you're talking about Williams <laughs> for like two hundred <laughs> words there. I mean, that He's was a national excessive. champion. Also, that's true. He had to touch on Greece, which is his wife's hometown. Russell Westbrook. Home, homeland, he met I in Greece. Say, right? Saw that. Yeah. 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 So we, we gave him a little rope. All right. Uh, but you know, five and five. I'll try and condense it. All right. All right. Uh, so here we go, Steve. So first question, who would you consider the top uncommitted senior prospect sleeper to watch for going into this year? All right. So the top uncommitted prospect is Bruce Brown, um, but in t he's not a sleeper. So in terms of, of sleepers, mm -hmm. I think that uh, – how many words do I have? Well, you just, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. You're waiting. You're talking about Mike. <laughs> yeah, Mike's laughing now. Uh, I think, you know what? Lee Academy's got a, a big kid, a, a left-handed Vitali, and I can't think of his last name off the top of my head, okay. but he's 6'10", lefty, can really run and jump, yep. can shoot it to three, right. and he's going to be a guy that as coaches start to circulate the, the prep ranks. Take notes. He's going to, yeah, Arizona State's already offered, and he, he'll have, there'll be more where that came okay. from. Uh, second one, most underrated uh, D1 commitment thus far. Most underrated D1 commitment. In terms of fit? In terms of fit. EJ Crawford to Iona. Um, EJ Crawford can really, really score the ball. He's yeah. a true three-range scorer. He can make threes. He's got a great mid-range game, and he knows how to get to the rim. Right. And what he does well fits Iona. Iona plays that sure. high-octane sure. offense perfectly. And by the same token, it's, it's not really popular to talk about this. I think some of the areas that maybe he's not quite as good at right. are areas that Iona will live with because he's so sure. good offensively. Sure. So I think he's going to have a great career there. Uh, and the third one, I'm so we have one. <laughs> future star from Elite 75 uh, that mm -hmm. comes to mind. Uh, from this year? From this year. Maxwell Lorca Lloyd. 
Lorca Lloyd. Or is it Lloyd Lorca? I always get it wrong. Northfield Mount Hermon okay. freshman. He's he's six nine. He runs and jumps. Plays with the PSA Cardinals because he's he's from New York. Right. But he is incredibly talented. I mean, this kid, you know, was like a man among boys. Right. Uh, watching him with the freshman. Last Not surprising. Month. John Carroll, Northfield. What they've done. They've. Yeah. No. Never tremendous. Ends. Tremendous talent. But he's got a chance to be. I mean, four years f- from now, he's got a chance to be really, really special. You weigh, watch the way he he moves at his mm-hmm. size and covers the court. And as I said. Already a man among boys, but he's still got a chance to keep just getting so much better. Right. So this year, I think he's a guy, especially yeah. a name that New England fans might not know sure. yet, he's a guy that's got a chance to be special. Uh, the fourth one, we're going to transition to the D1 college arena. College program at the D1 level to watch out for in 15-16. Uh, Rhode Island, overcoming major losses, Come on. major losses on their staff. I, I actually concur. But I think that, I think they're gonna have a big year. I yeah. think tur- tournament bound. And the Atlantic Ten's had Weekly. a unbelievable recruiting spurt the last, the last few weeks. Yeah, UMass, UMass and and URI have really led the way with that conference. Obviously, VCU is VCU. They've got a top one hundred. One of our favorite sites in the country. I think uh, Richmond. Um, we'll keep it at a, at a ZG uh, <laughs> ZG hotbed. But Richmond, I think, has a one of the most underrated classes really? in the A10, and then Kevin Marfo to GW, so that the, the conference as a whole is doing really well in recruiting. And I know you're fired up about the last question, Kevin. I am. I think it's a good one. Um, so the prep school matchup right. this year uh, that is a can't miss for you know college coaches, casual fans, what matchup at the prep school level do you have to tune in for? I got two. I have two, all right? I think in, in AA, it's uh, St. Thomas More and, and Brewster. Okay. You know, I think Brewster has just the perennial favorite year in and year out, but sure. this is a really good St. Thomas More team, and it could be their year, and so I think that's going to be a great game. Okay. The one that I'm really interested in, I think will be fun, is Vermont Academy against Northfield Mount Hermon, because okay. Alex Pope, Vermont Academy, he's uh, learned quite a bit from John Carroll at Northfield Mount Hermon, so it's kind of, you know, student versus teacher, but Vermont is loaded in their own right, able to compete with anyone, so I think that's going to be a great game, too. Great, and these are going to be coming up, Steve, obviously. We can't wait, yeah, and we're going to cover that uh, ZG Report. Also, we're happy to be partnering with you on Coaches vs. Cancer. We're going to have three great prep matchups at Babson College. Right, Right. It's not just just about the games. It's about giving back for a good cause, and you get the Scholar Round Ball Classic, all the best academic prep schools right after that, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, and Steve, i got to say, when we started ZG Weekly, obviously the goal of it being to give a voice to the grassroots community, and we can't thank Adam enough for coming no. on. And uh, we got a little gift for Adam, too. I know you how bad you want this. Is the belt? Do I have the if, belt? If, if, if we could get that on camera. Let me get this. What I mean, got? Adam's going to be on ESPN belt. on Sports Center wearing this. Somehow I mean, I, you can't beat that. I'm not sure they will allow this in the <laughs> studio, but I will try. Oh, as I long as we get the effort. Chris there you Tom go. find a way. There you go. Well, Thank we, you we very look forward much. to a great weekend uh, all over Massachusetts for the New England Hoop Festival. And uh, we'll be back soon on ZG Weekly. We've got a great guest coming up for you next week.